A huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. In a world where noise and chaos are the norm, what if I told you there's a pathway to inner peace and personal growth? Imagine unlocking the door to a calmer mind and a more resilient you. No smoke, no mirrors. This is the genuine power of therapy. Brace yourself for a transformative joyride. And guiding you along the way is today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is your digital fairy godparent of therapy, magically making therapy more accessible and affordable for everyone. With a team of licensed therapists ready to guide you toward your best self, the online experience is potent, putting an end to worries about waiting rooms and geo restrictions. Starting with BetterHelp is a breeze. Just answer a few simple questions and BetterHelp plays matchmaker, connecting you with a therapist tailored to your vibe, usually within 48 hours. From there, chat with your therapist however you please, through phone call, video chat, or even text messaging. Are you ready to level up the best version of yourself? Just click the link downstairs in our description or go to betterhelp.com slash besteverfoodindia to get 10% off your first month. And here's the kicker. If you do want to switch therapists for any reason, there are no insurance headaches or hidden fees. It's time to take control of your mental health journey. I mean it. Stop putting this off. Go to betterhelp.com slash besteverfoodindia now. Did you go? I'm trusting you. Now onto the show. In this video, you're going to see five Bangladeshi street foods that give Indian street food a run for its money. Oh my God, that's so delicious. But first, let's back up. Bangladesh is a country of only about 170 million, a mere David to the Goliath that is India's population of over 1 billion. But when it comes to the street food, this nation is packed with culinary wonders that can hit well above its weight class and maybe even rival its big brother next door. <laughs> you alright? So don't order your Indian takeout just yet, because we're about to show you five Dhaka street foods that might make you reach for that Bangladesh takeout menu. Our first Bangladesh banger comes in the form of the national dish of Bangladesh, the Ilish Bhat Borta. This seafood triple threat delicacy could go head to head with any Indian fish fry, but you will have to be the judge. <laughs> Our national fish is the Eilish from the Padma River. Here, we have Eilish from Chittagong and near the sea. But the Eilish from Padma is the best among them, and no other fish compares to the taste of our Eilish. Begin by descaling and cleaning the fish. These guys contribute a whopping 1% to the country's GDP. Next, slice it up with a boti knife, held snugly between the filet master's toes. Marinate eggplant slices in a turmeric and salt mixture and fry them on a hot tawa. Add sautéed onions and red chilies for an extra flavor kick. Place that combo on top of our fish. He won't mind. He's dead. Finally, the borta, a vegetable mix mashed with meats and spices. First, taki borta, where fish meat gets mashed with onions, chilies, cilantro, and a drizzle of leftover frying oil. Second, the shutki borta, a blend of peanuts, dried chilies, onions, and dill. <laughs> As we gather around the table, we meet the final component of this dish, the panta bat. The Ilish is no wallflower. It's the superstar of Bangladesh's food scene, with its crispy skin, white flaky meat, and an attitude that says, Hey guys, I'm the national fish for a reason. But the real magic happens when it joins forces with the fearless portas and tangy panta bat. Together, this trio hacks your taste buds with an unstoppable explosion of flavors. pots. They're not just relics for archaeological digs. They're really great at cooking up some real deal dishes. And guess what? We found a guy that's using clay pots like they're the latest kitchen gadget, whipping up one of the most authentic beef dishes in all of Bangladesh. Beef handi, Bangladesh ami I am the first person to bring beef handy to Bangladesh. In India, they cook this with mutton, but I decided to do it with beef. When you take the meat on your plate, it's whole, but when you put it in your mouth, it melts like butter. Daily, each of my restaurants sell 352 pounds of beef. I started with four pounds of meat per day. Now, I sell around 350 pounds per restaurant. Buckle up as we dive into the world of handi beef, also known as chaparan beef. Originating from the Indian region of chaparan, this dish is no ordinary beef stew. What sets it apart? The secret lies in the traditional clay pots, sealed with a piece of dough. This culinary technique works wonders, transforming the meat into a fall apart melt-in-your-mouth sensation. 
start this beef journey by tossing a full bowl of half smashed garlic into a pot. Now enter the secret masala, chili powder, dried red chilies, bay leaves, salt, cumin powder, and a generous pour of mustard oil. Give it all a good mix before introducing the cashmere chili powder and a giant bowl of onion paste. Add diced beef chunks to the mix. Once they've had their mingle moment, transfer everything to the traditional hand clay pots. Now lock in all the savory goodness by capping each pot with a lid and securing it with a piece of dough. It's like turning them into natural old school pressure cookers. Let them work their magic for a solid two and a half hours. After that, my friends, it's time to unleash the feast. Prepare a flavored trip that defies the laws of taste physics. This beef isn't just slow cooked, it's on a leisurely stroll through a time warping clay pot. The earthy flavor from the clay joins forces with a variety of spices. In a half buzzed moment of weakness, I attempted to snag these clay pots on Amazon, but no dice. It seems like we're destined for spontaneous trips to Bangladesh whenever the cravings hit. Coming up next, a well-kept secret in the local foodie community. Here comes Chicken Chop, a Mughlai dish that waltzed into the hearts of the Bengalis three centuries ago, courtesy of the Nawabs, the former big shots of South Asia. The fame of this dish spread like wildfire across the Indian subcontinent, transforming it from a royal palace delight to a street food sensation. One of the pioneers in embracing this evolution is this street-side eatery. In their 25 years of operation, they've consistently delivered authentic flavors, elevating them from a humble street stall to a bona fide restaurant. Fortunately for us, it remains a well-kept secret, known only among the locals and the half a million to a million people who watch this show. Shh. Start with a few scoops of oil on the hot tawa. Add the vegetable mix of diced red onions, tomatoes, and green bell peppers. Now let's talk chicken. Marinated overnight in their special homemade tandoori masala, then roasted for a full hour. Chop it up into bite-sized pieces and let it dance into the mix. Sprinkle some more tandoori masala, a dash of chili sauce, mix it all up and crown it with fresh coriander. The shredded chicken is soft and flavorful. Think buffalo sauce, but with an exotic twist. There's a fragrant sweet and sour kick that hits you with every bite. And just when you think it's over, the green chilies jump in with a spicy encore. As we conclude our exploration of Dhaka's hidden gems, we visit food nomads who started their business in a tent with food so good they really didn't need a permanent address. They've got fans and roadies who follow them as they move around every few months in Dhaka. Bow down to Pangash Buna. This common yet delightful fish takes a dive into Bangladeshi culinary excellence with the beloved Buna curry, where Buna translates to fry in Urdu. Unlike its more laid-back curry counterparts, this cooking style brings out a bit of aggression, extracting bold flavors through the art of frying. The end result? A taste that not only stands out, but that proudly declares itself bolder and spicier than your average curry. All Bangladeshi people love the Pangas fish. When people come here near the river, they get the freshest fish. It's more popular during winter, with winter vegetables. That's why everyone comes here. To make it, start by giving the pangosh fish some tender loving care. Clean it up, then slice it into inch thick pieces. Marinate these slices with a pinch of salt, allowing them to rest and soak in the flavor. Meanwhile, in a pan, heat up mustard oil and sizzle sliced red onions and green chilies. Introduce water to the mix along with turmeric powder, chili powder, and bay leaves. Now the pangosh fish. Sneak in some tomatoes and fresh coriander. Let it simmer for an additional 20 minutes before the grand unveiling. The 
frying of the seasonings unleashes deep, rich flavors that cut through the culinary noise. The pangosh fish, akin to the texture of salmon, boasts a soft, sweet, and wonderfully fatty taste. Pair this delectable dish with a side of plain white rice for a culinary experience that's nothing short of extraordinary. India might be the place where curry was born, but our last dish, a giant prawn curry, is considered to be in a class of its own. So what sets it apart? Let's find out. Everyone loves prawn more or less. I have been to many countries in Asia. You can't find big prawns anywhere else like it's found here. Everyone loves the seafood from our country. The seafood from our country tastes different. Others don't use the spices we use in our foods. Behold, Chingri Malai Kari, a Bengali specialty that was introduced in the 8th century by Malaysian traders, combining the spices of both countries with giant local river prawns. To whip it up, start by cleaning those giant river prawns, making sure to evict any, uh, unwelcome guests. That means taking out the poop. In a pan, saute diced red onions until softened. Add water, salt, and green chilies. Blend onions and coconut into a creamy paste and stir in some turmeric. Now it's time for the prawns to shine. Let them cook for 20 to 25 minutes and voila, they're ready for the table. Dive into the prawn experience, where the meat is a texture marvel, springy and satisfying. The creamy coat is like a smooth operator, hitting you with a sophisticated coconut taste that's both sweet and savory. You'll catch yourself doing a covert cleanup, perhaps a sly finger lick, and a quick scan to make sure no one witnessed your moment of food pleasure. After immersing myself in the delightful world of Dhaka's culinary wonders, the time has come to play favorites. So which one stood out more? Was it the triple threat of Ilish Bhat Borta, the subtle and creamy Chingri curry, the clay pot Handi beef, the shredded chicken chop, or the bold flavors of the Pangash Buna? Today, my vote goes to the Handi beef. Not only did the clay pot make it taste unique, but it also gave off some serious kitchen swagger. Now it's your turn. Which one of these delectable dishes would you choose as your go-to dish? Let me know downstairs in the comments below. And for more extravagant feasts for your senses, make sure to subscribe to Best Ever Food India. Thanks. Bye. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to beffers.shop today.